Hello friends. In today's lecture, we will uh, go a little bit deeper into the understanding of uh, turbulent boundary layers. So before that, let us uh, derive or show how to derive the Reynolds uh, uh, average Navier Stokes equations and the energy equation and how um, you get the Reynolds stress terms and how that is modeled. So that is how we will go about today's class. Okay. So let's move on to the whiteboard. So, in the last class, we mentioned that um, the averaging of the flow can be done using, let's say, time averaging or space averaging. Uh, in uh, larger dissimulation, you use the space averaged Navier Stokes equations. And uh, you do what is called a subgrid scale modeling. And uh, in most steady or stationary um, turbulent flows, we use what is called the time averaging or the Reynolds averaging. So in Reynolds averaging, what is normally done is you take the equation. Let us say we are uh, looking at uh, 2D steady state. Uh, constant property uh, Navier Stokes and energy equation. So you um, write del u by del x plus del v by del y equal to 0. Now what you try to do is to integrate this from time t is equal to 0 to some time period tp of this whole thing dt, okay? And you also say that um, you define u bar as integral from 0 to tp of u dt. And uh, so what you would then get is u at x, y, t, even though this is steady state, the turbulence is always unsteady, would be actually um, u bar, okay, plus u prime, where we actually said that uh, with time, if I plot the u bar, or if I plot the u, then I would get a distribution which is oscillatory like that. The mean of that which is a u bar, is steady with time. So u bar is steady. In such a case, actually the turbulence itself is unsteady, but we call it a steady state turbulence if the mean velocity is, or mean flow is steady. And then these fluctuations are called the u prime. So if I write u bar plus u prime, then the fluctuations are moved to the origin like that. Right? So if I add this plus these, I get these. Okay? So that is how you write. In the same fashion, you write um, uh, V bar plus V prime is V, uh, P bar plus P prime is P, and T bar plus T prime is T. So these instantaneous quantities are functions of time, but in steady state turbulence, these bar quantities, the average quantities, are independent of time. Okay. This time averaging can be used also for um, uh, time varying flows, in which case the value of Tp must be much smaller than the time scale over which the transients in the turbulence are happening. For example, suppose I have a turbulent flow which is oscillating like that, the mean velocity would be something like that and the fluctuating velocity would be on top of that in this fashion. The time scale over which these can be averaged should be smaller, substantially smaller as compared to the time scale over which the variations are happening. Okay. So that is how, so even in unsteady state you can still use this uh, 
uh, what is called the Reynolds averaging. So this is what we call as the Reynolds averaging of uh, so time averaging of the fluctuating variables or the uh, turbulent variables so that you get something which is mean that uh, does not vary uh, as rapidly as the actual uh, the instantaneous velocity right, or the instantaneous pressure does, but it varies according to the time scale of the problem, whereas the fluctuations go according to the time scale of the turbulence. So that is how um, the time averaging is done. And once you do the time averaging, what will happen to this? Suppose I write this u as u bar plus u prime and this v as v bar plus v prime and then do this integration. Then what will happen? You will get um, an integral, the del by del x can be taken out from 0 to dp of u dt plus this del by del y from integral 0 to dp of v dt. So this is u bar plus u prime and so the v u bar in the time average remains u bar and uh, u prime in the time average goes to 0. According to whatever we uh, define here, so if I integrate this from 0 to tp, I get this integral of this from 0 to tp of dt. Then this is actually equal to u bar, that's what you have defined and therefore what happens is integral of u prime dt from 0 to tp is 0. Okay. Similarly for v prime t prime t prime. So if I use that, then the the governing equation, I've just integrated, exchanged the differential and integral in this one. So this gives me del u bar by del x plus del v bar by del y equal to 0. In other words, if I also write that um, this is u bar plus u prime and v bar plus v prime, the integral of u bar u prime and v prime go to 0. So you get an equation which is the time averaged um, or Reynolds averaged continuity equation. Okay, which looks exactly the same as the instantaneous equation except that the u and v are replaced by u bar and v bar. Uh, similarly, the x momentum equation, suppose I write it in the form u del u by del x plus v del u by del y is equal to minus 1 by rho del p by del x plus mu uh, del squared u by del x squared plus del squared u by del y squared. Okay, so if I uh, can do an integration, let's say integral from 0 to tp of this whole thing dt is equal to integral from 0 to tp of this whole thing dt. Okay, so that is the equation. Now let us look at the left hand side. Okay, so if I, uh, before doing anything else, if I write this as u bar plus u prime and this also is u bar plus u prime, then I have a product of uh, u bar plus u prime into del by del x of u bar plus u prime. Okay, the, let's do the integral later. So this first term, this will get u bar del u bar by del x plus u bar del u prime by del x plus v bar del u bar by del x, del u bar by del y plus v prime, the v bar, oh sorry, what am I doing? It's only the first term. Um, plus um, u prime del u bar by del x plus u prime del u prime by del x. Okay, so this is the first term. So if I integrate this from 0 to tp, the first term dt is equal to integral of this from 0 to tp dt. This is the first term. Okay, then LHS let's say first term. 
So what happens here? This u bar del u bar by del x, the whole average will remain u bar del u bar by del x itself, plus u bar del u prime by del x, the whole average, the u bar can be taken out because it's constant during the period. Then you have del by del x of integral of u dt, which goes to zero. Okay, so the time interval of a time integral of that goes to zero. Similarly, u prime del u bar by del x, this del u bar by del x is uh, okay, independent of time, so it can be taken out. So it will be integral of u prime dt, which will again be zero, plus u prime del u prime by uh, del x uh, will uh, have this. Um, uh, so I can take this into the derivative, it will become del by del x of u prime squared. So it actually is u prime squared. So you, uh, when you integrate this, you will have a del by del x of uh, u prime squared by 2. Okay. Okay. So the by 2 will be there and this will get averaged. So u prime squared bar. Okay. So this is the first term. In the same fashion, if I do the second term, that will be v bar plus v prime into del u bar, u bar plus u prime by del y, I will get again v bar del u bar by del y plus the other two terms which is v bar into del u prime by del y and v prime into del u bar by del y will both go to 0 and then I will have v prime u prime. So I can uh, take this into the uh, derivative. So this is um, 0 plus 0 plus uh, this is v prime del u prime by del y. Uh, if I um, uh, take um, this into the uh, cutting and write it as uh, del by del y of uh, v prime u prime this is t prime u prime minus uh, uh, u prime then v prime by del y. Okay, and uh, this when I uh, integrate, this will become an over bar, and this will become an over bar. Uh, so I can actually. Uh, this also you could have actually written as um, okay. So uh, this and uh, this term together would actually give me a. Uh, del by del x of u prime u prime u prime u prime minus uh, u prime del u prime by del x this is one term and this will be this minus this so if i look at this term and this term this is actually uh, u prime into del u prime by del x and u prime into del, del v prime by del y. So it will be actually uh, u prime multiplied by del u prime by del x plus del v prime by del y uh, with a minus sign of course will be this and this put together. And uh, since from the continuity equation this is 0 and del u by del x plus del v by del y is also 0. The difference between these two is this, which is also 0, and therefore that part of the term goes out. Then I would have um, del by del x of u prime u prime and del by del y of v prime u prime. Those are the two terms that will come here. So uh, let's write that. So the left hand side would be equal to u bar del u bar by del x plus v bar del u bar by del y plus del by del x of u prime u prime bar 
plus del by del y of v prime u prime bar. Okay, so uh, these are the two terms that remain. Is it a plus or a minus? Let me just go back and check. So it's all plus. Okay, so on and this minus terms are cancelled out, so it's all plus. All right. Okay, so the right hand side, if I try to integrate that. Uh, minus 1 by rho is a constant. Del by del x, if I take out, integral of p dt will give me p bar. So that term can be written as it is. Plus, the next term will be mu times del square by del x square of integral of u dt will be u bar plus del square by del y square. So I just take the interchange the differential integral and I get the u bar and v bar as it is there. Okay, so if I uh, combine these two, I keep these things on the left hand side and bring these things to the right hand side, then I'll get u bar del u bar by del x plus v bar del u bar by del y is minus 1 by rho uh, del p bar by del x plus uh, this I can write it as del by del x of new del u by del x. So I can write the del by del x common here, del by del x of the first term is new del u by del x minus the second term which comes here with a negative sign, it will be u prime u prime bar. Plus del by del y Again, this will be new del v by del y, new del u by del y, sorry, new, new del u by del y minus u prime v prime bar. Okay, so what you can see is that the left hand side remains in the same form as before, u bar del u by del, del x with v bar, v bar del u by del y, so u del u by del x, v del u by del y becomes in, in terms of the time average. The del by del x term remains the same. It's actually the diffusion terms or the uh, viscosity terms which have an additional term that uh, got added to them. So this term has got a minus u prime u prime bar and this second term has a minus u prime v prime bar. So this shows us that the turbulence contributes an additional mechanism for diffusion or additional mechanism of shear in addition to viscous shear, so this is molecular viscous shear. And this is turbulent viscous shear. Okay, so the total, this term together is apparent shear stress. Okay, similarly, this is molecular viscous shear. This is the turbulent viscous shear, so these two together is the apparent viscous shear. Okay, so the turbulence appears to have provided an extra uh, viscous shear term which causes this. We can understand that in a very uh, simple form. So suppose this is my uh, flat plate, okay, I'll just uh, take the example of a simple flat plate boundary layer. And this, let us say, is my turbulent boundary layer. In the laminar boundary layer, if there is one layer here and another layer here, the only mechanism of transfer of momentum from this to this is the viscous shear. Okay, so there will be only this new del u by del y term that is present. But in the turbulent thing, there is also an eddy motion that happens. So the fluid at this location would be transferred to this location by the movement of eddies. Okay, so that brings out an additional mechanism of transferring the momentum from the lower layer to the upper layer and the upper layer to the lower layer, and that is what this turbulent viscous shear contributes. Okay, so when this happens, the fluid which is at a higher velocity here will be brought to, brought to a layer which is at lower velocity. And similarly, the fluid which is at a lower velocity here will be taken to the fluid at higher velocity, and additional momentum transfer will take place because of this eddy motion, and that is constituted to by that is constituted by that, that is contributed that, that is represented by these terms the 
uh, viscous shear or the viscous tra transport, the turbulent transport caused by the eddy mixing here is resulting in the additional uh, shear terms, turbulent shear terms that are present in this equation. In the same fashion, we can also look at the energy equation, for example. So, there is some temperature here and there is some temperature here. This eddy motion will bring the fluid at this temperature to this layer and the fluid at this temperature to this layer and therefore, there is an additional mixing mechanism happening in addition to the molecular conduction that uh, would typically happen here. So, in addition to the term which looks like this in the energy equation which is molecular conduction, there will be an additional discussion shear term that will come into picture. Okay. So, we will um, write that when that equation comes. In the same fashion, I can write the Y momentum equation as I have derived uh, the X momentum equation. That will look like, uh, so let us call this equation um, So, this let us call this equation as 2. Uh, then the y momentum equation will look like u bar then v bar by del x plus v bar then v bar by del y is equal to minus 1 by rho then p bar by del y plus del by del x of uh, nu del u by del x then v by del x minus u prime v prime bar plus del by del y of nu del u by del del v by del y minus v prime v prime bar. Okay, so these are the terms that you would typically get. So this is your equation number three, so which is the y momentum equation. So this is y momentum equation and this is the x momentum equation. And in the same fashion, if I go to the energy equation, so the energy equation will look something like this. So, you have u del t by del x plus v del t by del y is equal to alpha del square t by del x square plus del square t by del y square. So, if I integrate both sides, it would actually give the two additional terms here, which contain u prime t prime and v prime t prime. And then t prime multiplied by del u prime by del x plus del v prime by del y would cancel out exactly like we did in the momentum equation here. Uh, uh, here, actually, we would have got uh, u prime t prime here and v prime t prime here and the additional t prime into del u prime by del x and t prime into del u by del v prime by del y would have got cancelled because of continuity equation. So, you would then write this equation in the form u prime del t prime t bar by u bar del, del t bar by del x plus v bar del t bar by del y is equal to uh, del by del x of you would have alpha del t by del x minus u prime t prime bar plus del by del y of alpha del t by del y minus v prime t prime uh, space squared. plus del by del y of alpha del t by del y minus v prime t prime bar. Okay. So, now this is your molecular diffusion term in the x direction and this is the eddy diffusion term in the x direction. This is the molecular diffusion term in the y direction. This is the eddy diffusion term in the y direction for energy or rather molecular conduction term and the eddy conduction term. Okay. So, now uh, in um, these equations, because we have done time averaging, initially we had four equations, um, the continuity, x momentum, y momentum and z momentum equation or the continuity, x momentum, y momentum and energy equation. And there were four unknowns, u, v, p and t. So, you had four equations and four unknowns, um, continuity, 
X momentum, Y momentum and energy. So four equations, four unknowns, it was possible to solve. Now what happened? We have created U bar, U prime, V bar, V prime, uh, then P bar, uh, P bar, P prime, P bar, T prime. So there are eight uh, equations, uh, sorry, eight unknowns, and uh, there are no eight equations. Uh, okay, we also eliminated the U bar, V bar, P bar by uh, integrating, but what we ended up doing was that, okay, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, but in place of that, you have got U bar, uh, U prime, U prime bar, bar, U prime, V prime bar, V prime, V prime bar, and uh, U prime, uh, U prime T prime bar and V prime T prime bar. Now we have created one, two, three, four, five extra terms in these equations and we don't know how to solve them because we don't have additional equations for these. So the, what the Reynolds averaging results in is a creation of additional unknowns more than the number of uh, additional equations that we can actually generate and uh, we get into what is called the classical closure problem. of turbulence. What is this closure problem of turbulence? You never have enough equations to solve for the number of unknowns that you have. And therefore, you need inputs in order to solve those uh, equations from some other means uh, other than mathematics. It's not possible to completely solve them using um, the mathematical uh, form because the number of equations always is shorter than number of unknowns. So what we need is to model turbulence and these models are usually derived on the basis of either um, arguments about uh, how uh, the, the turbulent uh, flow behaves and uh, from the physical understanding of the way the turbulent flow behaves we could create the models. Uh, it's also possible to do uh, modeling of turbulence uh, by getting data from experimental measurements of how the flow behaves in various circumstances and accordingly create these models. Okay. So that is the uh, thing that we do. So this modeling of turbulence is a very open area. Depending on how complex or how detailed the uh, information you need from your uh, uh, model, you would uh, actually uh, can do models of different levels of complexity. Okay. In this course, what we will do is to take the simplest and most classical of these models, which is called the mixing link model, and the eddy viscosity model. Okay. So we will deal with these uh, two concepts in uh, dealing with the equations that we have to solve right now. And we introduce what is called the concept of eddy viscosity or eddy diffusivity or eddy conductivity. And we will reintroduce the concept of mixing length which will help us evaluate the eddy viscosity. Okay, so that is what uh, we will be doing in um, today's lecture. Okay, so eddy viscosity models. So what does the eddy viscosity model mean? In uh, the, sh the, the x momentum equation, the right hand side you had del by del x of two terms. One is mu del u by del x or del u bar by del x minus u bar u prime u prime bar. Okay. So this has a molecular viscosity and a velocity gradient. Okay. 
and uh, we know that this is uh, caused by exchange of momentum because of viscous shear between two layers of the flow whose gradient is del u bar by del x and similarly this is caused by the turbulent diffusion or turbulence causing additional mixing u prime u prime bar okay so if we also say that this is also an additional shear mechanism and therefore it should be also in the same form so you write it as minus u prime u prime bar is equal to uh, nu t into del u bar by del x okay similarly you have a term that is del by del y of nu del u by del y by del u bar by del y minus u prime v prime bar so here you say minus u prime v prime bar is equal to nu t times del u bar by del y okay so this modeling where we say that the viscous the shear that is caused by the turbulence the turbulent shear stress u prime u prime bar and the turbulent shear stress u prime v prime bar are also proportional to the respective mean velocity gradients and the proportionality is uh, given by an eddy viscosity nu t which would not be as constant or uh, dependent only on fluid properties like the nu is but this nu t would depend on the local flow pattern and it would vary from one lo location to another depending on the uh, kind of turbulence that prevails in the local area okay so this nu t therefore is called the eddy viscosity just like nu is the molecular viscosity so then what happens if i substitute this into this equation then i get a nu del u bar by del x plus nu t del u bar by del x so i collect the coefficients then i get uh, again, the right hand side of the x momentum equation looks like del by del x of nu plus nu t into del u bar by del x and plus similarly here i have said this is nu t del u by del y so there will be a nu del u by del, del u bar by del y and plus nu t del u bar by del y so i'll get a del by del y of uh, nu plus nu t multiplied by del u bar by del y okay so now this is uh, you often termed as the apparent viscosity which is the sum of the laminar viscosity and the eddy viscosity similarly here also it's the laminar viscosity plus the eddy viscosity okay so one assumption that gets made here is that this nu t is isotropic what does it mean it means that it is independent of the plane or the angle uh, of the plane with respect to the uh, principal axis or the axis of uh, movement so irrespective of whether i am taking it on the xy plane yz plane or the zx plane the nu t is the same right so um, what do i mean by that let me uh, clarify that in the uh, next uh, slide so in your uh, momentum equation you have a stress tensor called a reynolds stress tensor tau t is equal to minus u prime u prime bar in the x direction equation it will then be three terms minus u prime v prime bar and minus u prime w prime bar we have not written the three dimensional equation so this term didn't appear in our equation but we still did right and uh, in the v uh, y moment in equation i will get a minus v prime u prime bar and there are minus v prime v prime bar Okay, and a minus v prime w prime bar, and the third equation which we have never written would have a minus w prime u prime bar minus 
minus w prime v prime bar and minus w prime w prime bar. So this is your Reynolds stress tensor and in this you can see that it's a symmetric matrix. These two are the same. This and this are the same and this and this are the same. So this triangle and this triangle are the same. So it's actually a symmetric matrix. So you have six independent Reynolds stresses. So this turbulent shear tensor is called the Reynolds stress tensor. Okay, just like you had the molecular stress tensor, which had the uh, okay, new del T by del X, del U by del X here, new del U by del Y, new del U by del Z, new del V by del X, new del V by del Y, new del V by del Z, new del W by del X, new del W by del Y, new del W by del Z. Now you have new T del U by del X, new T del U by del Y, new T del U by del Z, new T del V by del X, new T del V by del Y, new T del V by del Z, and new T del W by del X, new T del W by del Y, new T del W by then set. Okay, so what you have assumed is the new T is the same in all of these terms. Okay, that is what we call as isotropic assumption. Okay, otherwise what will happen in the most general case of turbulence where the fluctuations uh, U prime, V prime and W prime, these are the fluctuations in the velocity. Uh, the isotropic turbulence basically assumes that U prime, V prime and W prime are of similar orders of magnitude. So that is if I have a particle of fluid here, it's uh, oscillating, the, it's fluctuating velocity x direction, y direction and z direction have similar orders of magnitude. Okay, so the turbulent mixing happens in the same fashion or similar fashion in all three directions. Okay, so the turbulent shear is also the same in all, all directions. That is what is uh, expected here. This isotropic turbulence is a very, very rare uh, occurrence in real uh, physics. And therefore, this model, a viscosity model, is a very restricted and very simplistic model. For the first course of uh, turbulence, normally we take isotropic turbulence or homogeneous turbulence. And this is used for uh, many of the model developments. But then the most complex shear flows where the turbulence is present, the Reynolds stress, all six Reynolds stresses have to be solved for separately and uh, you have to derive equations for each of these Reynolds stresses. So you have to solve what is called the RSM, the Reynolds stress model for turbulence. Okay. The simpler cases are where you can assume a single value of new T and you can model the new T using the concepts that we are going to discuss just now. Okay. In the same fashion, uh, for u prime t prime bar and v prime t prime bar, v or with a negative sign of course, this you call it as alpha t del t bar by del x and this you call it as alpha t del t bar by del y and therefore your uh, energy equation becomes u bar del t bar by del x plus v bar del t bar by del y is equal to uh, del by del x of alpha plus alpha t uh, times del t bar by del x plus del by del y of alpha plus alpha t to del t bar by del y. So here again we have assumed that this turbulent diffusion of heat is also isotropic, so you have the same alpha t in the x and y directions, right? So that's uh, the isotropic turbulence assumption. Okay, so the uh, terms that we looked at here, so we said that, um, yeah, we said that this is the laminar or molecular uh, shear and this is the turbulent uh, shear and this is the total which is called the apparent shear. Similarly, this is a laminar shear, uh, turbulent shear, and this is the total apparent shear. In the same fashion, in the energy equation, we said this is the 
um, yeah, in the, this is why I'm going to make equation. Yeah, in the energy equation, these terms we represent using the uh, turbulent terms, and therefore this is the uh, say an analogous model to uh, what we have done for viscosity. So if I do this and then uh, okay, try to uh, analyze the laminar boundary layer, the, the turbulent boundary layer using these equations. So we need to derive the boundary layer equations. for a flat plate turbulent flow. Okay, so if the flow over the flat plate is um, uh, in the turbulent regime, then what would these equations look like? Okay, so we have to go back to, so this may, would be my equation number four, the energy equation in this form. Okay, so now if I uh, take the equations 1, 2, 3, and 4 that we have written for uh, the turbulent uh, boundary layers, right? Yeah. Okay, so this 2, 3, and this is equation number 4 actually. Okay. Now, the if I take a, take these these things and I write the uh, uh, equations for the turbulent boundary layer, so then what are the assumptions that we have in the boundary layer? In the boundary layer, we say that the uh, since it is a flat plate, the pressure gradient uh, completely vanishes. This y momentum equation can be discarded because the velocities in the y direction are negligible, it's predominantly in the x direction. And uh, in the x momentum equation, this term would go to zero, and the d by dx terms are negligible compared to the d by dy terms because the boundary layer is slender and thin. So what will happen? We will retain this term, this term, and this term, which includes the turbulent. Okay. Similarly, in the energy equation, we will retain this term and this term. This would get neglected. We will retain this term, and we would write them in terms of their viscosity. So let's do that. Um, we will um, write the equation of uh, boundary layer, which will look like del u bar by del x plus del u del v bar by del y equal to 0. So this I call it as equation 1. Then u del u by del x plus v del u by del y is equal to del by del y of mu plus mu t into del u by del, del u bar by del y. Okay. Similarly, u del t by del x, the del t bar by del x plus v del t bar by del y is equal to del by del y of alpha plus alpha t into del t bar by del y. So this is, let's say, equation number 2, and this is equation number 4. Equation number 3 is neglected. Okay? So let me call this as equation 1a, 2a, and 4a, because we have written it in the form of radian viscosity. Right? So now, if I uh, take only the fluid mechanics equations 1a and 2a, we will come to the 4a later, um, and look at uh, very near the wall, okay. very near the wall, uh, what happens is that uh, since the velocities are extremely small, the inertial terms, the acceleration terms that are appearing on the left hand side would be very close to zero, in which case the LHS is approximately equal to 0, which is then also equal to the RHS, which basically means that del by del y of this term is approximately 0, which then means this apparent shear stress
which is mu plus mu t into del u bar by del y is uh, independent of y okay because del by del y of that is zero so this um, is it would then at the wall be equal to tau wall by yeah tau wall of x okay so at the wall of course the new t will be identically zero and uh, u bar would be equal to u and therefore new del u by del y at the wall is tau wall of x so the tau wall of x uh, would be equal to this and so since in the near wall region it is uh, independent of y for a certain distance from the wall this apparent shear stress nu plus nu t to del u by del y del u bar by del y would be equal to tau wall of x pretty close to one okay so this is uh, what uh, we would uh, write okay and um, what does that uh, tell us Okay, this is not the wall uh, of x, but this is the wall by rho because this is new and not new. So this is the wall of x divided by rho. Okay, so uh, pretty close to the wall, for a certain distance from the wall, let us say, very very near the wall in the near wall region. Okay, so we can call it the inner layer if you would like. So if I have a boundary layer, I can divide it into two parts, which is the near wall region or the inner layer and the farther from the wall but still within the boundary layer which is the outer layer okay so in the outer layer the uh, the inertial terms would not be negligible and therefore uh, there would be some finite order of magnitude here and actually what happens as you approach the uh, by edge of the boundary layer that is the free stream then the del u bar by del y term itself would start vanishing and therefore this apparent shear stress would start completely vanishing. Okay, so if I would like to plot that, uh, let's say this is my y-axis. Okay, and so this is let us say tau wall by rho. So there is a certain distance over uh, the y where this is reasonably independent of y okay and after that it goes decreasing and eventually vanishes as um, the edge of the boundary layer is approached okay so uh, if i plot this as tau at any y by rho it will be equal to tau wall by rho in this region and so this region i would call the inner layer where this uh, tau is very, uh, close to tau all by rho and it doesn't change with uh, y and in the region where it changes with y and eventually vanishes is the outer layer. Okay, And in this also, pretty close to the wall or at the wall, nu t itself is zero. So the tau wall by rho is equal to the uh, laminar nu del u by del y. But uh, as you go up, the turbulent contribution starts coming in. So you will have a certain region here like this, which will be the laminar term, which is the new del u bar by del y. So at this location, for example, the new del u bar by del y is this, and new t del u bar by del y is this much. Okay. So that initially it is entirely new del u bar by del y. And after uh, some distance, the uh, laminar contribution becomes smaller and turbulent contribution becomes bigger. And beyond this, the laminar contribution is negligible. It's entirely new T del by del. Okay. So this region where uh, there is still dominance of viscosity is called the laminar sublayer. Okay where the uh, lam okay, laminar sublayer is where the viscosity, molecular viscosity is playing a very important role. So I can say in this, the laminar okay, sublayer is the region where nu is much greater than nu t in laminar sublayer.
and in the region outside the laminar sublayer, in the inner region as well as the outer region, uh, you have the opposite, which is nu nu is much less than nu t in the uh, outside laminar sublayer. Okay, so with that, uh, we can uh, do the various uh, models. And uh, going back to the boundary layer sketch that I had uh, drawn to show you uh, how eddy transport actually uh, happens. So, if for example, here you have a velocity u bar at y, and here you have a velocity u bar at y minus l, where l is the length scale of eddy, okay. The length scale of the AD is where the fluid blob, which for example a small blob of fluid that moves from here to here, this fluid blob is going, not going to mix with the surrounding uh, fluids uh, until such time that it gets here. Okay, so the length scale over which the fluid uh, fluid masses that form an AD uh, retain their identity is called uh, the length scale of uh, the AD. So over this length L, this u bar of y, uh, the fluid which is at a velocity u bar of y comes to a fluid layer which is at u bar of y minus l. So the velocity fluctuation that is caused by this u prime at any location is going to be equal to u bar at y minus u bar at y minus l, which I can write it as l times del u bar by del y at that location. Right, so this is u bar. Now, since this AD is a circular thing, the u bar and v bar uh, that are caused by this are of the same order of magnitude. So this is also of the order of v bar, v prime. So u prime and v prime are both of the order of l times the u bar by del y, where l is the length scale of the AD or the size of the AD at any distance y from the boundary. Okay, so we call this l as the mixing length. So then we get a mechanism or method by which we can actually define the uh, eddy viscosity using this. So we know that uh, the eddy viscosity is defined as u prime v prime bar is equal to nu t times del u by del y with a negative sign. So if I know what is u prime and what is v prime, I should be able to define what is uh, nu t. So that is what I will uh, do next. So I will uh, write this expression that uh, u prime is equal to L times del u, by, del u bar by del y is equal to let's say v prime. Then minus u prime v prime bar is equal to nu t del u bar by del y and that will be equal to product of this twice, so it will be L squared del u bar by del y with a negative sign. Okay, now if I, uh, sorry, this little bit will be whole square. Okay, so then nu t, if I want to take it as a positive magnitude uh, value, this del u bar by del y can get cancelled, and I will say this is equal to L times, uh, sorry, L squared times modulus of del u bar by del y. Okay, because one del u bar by del y would get cancelled between these two and so nu t will be equal to minus L squared by times this. I want nu t to be a positive quantity because it's a viscosity. So nu t would be L squared times modulus of del u bar by del y. Okay, so now if I uh, argue that this mixing length L can at most be equal to y because in the boundary layer that I have just shown you, um, yeah, so if this is the distance y from the wall, the size of the AD can at most be equal to the size of the distance from the wall and cannot be larger than uh, that, okay. So and as we go away from the wall, this L can become larger and larger and as you go closer to the wall, this L will become 
smaller. That is the thing that you uh, can understand from this. So we say that um, we say that L is equal to some kappa times y, uh, where kappa is of the order of one or less. Okay, then you will be able to say mu t is equal to kappa square l square. Sorry, kappa square y square multiplied by modulus of del u bar by del y. So this is your uh, Aegis Costi model. So as you go closer to y is equal to zero, this becomes smaller and smaller, and therefore the mu becomes much greater than mu um, uh, t. And as you go farther and further away from the wall, the mu becomes uh, bigger, and therefore mu t becomes predominant over mu. Uh, so you can actually have a, a two layer uh, boundary layer models one layer in which it is laminar sublayer where mu is much greater than mu t and um, uh, outer uh, or rather um, a turbulent core if I may say where mu is much less than mu t and um, so suppose I have uh, these two regions, uh, this is the region where mu is much less than mu t and this is the region where mu is much greater than mu t. There will be some region in between where the mu is of the order of mu t and there is a transition. So you actually extend this solution downwards and you extend this solution upwards and wherever they meet you say is the uh, limit of that layer or the thickness of the laminar sublayer. Okay. So you can call it as delta delta SL, right? There, which is the thickness of the laminar sublayer, and this delta SL can be uh, matched by saying that uh, wherever the shear stress given by this is equal to the shear stress given by this, that is the thickness of the laminar sublayer. Okay, so that is one way of uh, doing the two-layer models. There are also more complex models which talk about a three-layer model where uh, this is much less and this is much greater, and there is off the order. So you can say you can, and there is a laminar sublayer, there is a fully turbulent core, and there is a buffer layer in between. So that gives you a three-layer model. Okay. So we can uh, model the boundary layer with uh, velocity profiles just like we did in uh, integral method, assuming velocity profiles and then integrating them over. We can do in uh, turbulent uh, boundary layers as well by assuming velocity profiles of uh, uh, where the, like, the laminar viscosity is predominant and where the like, turbulent viscosity is predominant and the region where it is uh, in between the two. And therefore, we can actually derive the expressions for the turbulent shear stress. So in the next class, we will do those um, assumptions or those uh, profile uh, assumptions and then integrate uh, using the integral equation of the boundary layer to get the expression for the wall shear and the heat flux. Okay, so we'll do that in the next class. We'll stop here for now. Thank you.